let's learn about iteration. So we're going to learn the for loop and the while loop. Let's start with the for loop. So the for loop starts off by just typing the word for, and notice it's orange, so that means it's a keyword. Now, for loops loop over a block of code. It just executes that block of code over and over again. So what we can do here is we can say for number in range five. Okay, so a couple things happening here. For number, what's happening here is that the number is actually a variable that we will now have access to. You can name this anything you like. For me, I've named it number just so we can be clear. And in range, in is another keyword, and range is a built in function from Python. What this is going to do is it means that it's going to create a series of numbers going from zero to four. Okay, so now if we explore this a little bit more, let's print number. Notice the indent. It's inside the for loop. Let's run this code. And you can see it starts at zero, goes zero, one, two, three, four. Now, it might confuse you because it says five and it's range. So just know that whenever you do range, it starts at zero. Okay. And when you have five here, you are saying loop until you get to five and stop at five. So it's going to start at zero and keep looping to five. We can show you an example of this by changing this to four. And it's going to go all the way to number three and then stop at four. So four number in range. If we don't want the zero, uh, we can define a start point for the range. We can do this. So start at one and end at four. So if we rerun that again, you can see it starts at one and ends at three. And that's the most simple for loop you can have. It will, whatever's inside here, it will keep executing for whatever you specified here. So that can come in handy in the future. Now let's look at something a little bit more, uh, let's say complicated. I'm just going to copy and paste this here. It is a list that you are familiar with from a previous video. It's a list of games. Okay, cool. So what if we want to look at each value in this list or each item in this list and print it out line by line? So we know we can do print games. And if we did, we ran that, notice it prints the actual list back to us. It doesn't print out the item itself. So if we wanted to loop through this list, we can do for. Remember, we now create a variable and it, let's say the variable name can be game because we want to loop through each game for game in games. So for value or for item in list. Okay. So then we can print game. Notice we are printing game and not games because we want access to that item. And if we run the code again, now we have the last of us Fortnite Valorant as strings outputted to the terminal line by line. So you can see how powerful, powerful this can be. It can keep looping through anything. Let's try a dictionary. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get a dictionary again, something you should be familiar with. This is from a previous video. I'll just clear that and move that out the way. Remember, this is a dictionary with key value pairs. This is an item in the dictionary and it has a key, not an index, and it has a value. So now if we want to do the same thing with the for loop, we say for, and now we're going to say game, for game in games, and let's see if that works. Print game. Okay. Shift F10. And you can see we are printing the last of us, etc. So we're printing out the keys. Okay. Now, what if we want to have access to the value? So we can do this for game, comma, and then the value. So we're going to create a variable called price. 
You see, we're just trying to make it really clear with naming. This represents game. This represents price. In other words, it represents key value. Now, important to note here, if we do Shift F10, it's going to fail. Too many values to unpack. So what we need to do is games.items. If you remember these built-in functions that we can use, we just need to use the dot items one, which will return the items, and we want to get the so we can get the actual value. So now if we did print game comma price and we ran the code again, you'll see we have the last of us with its price, Fortnite with its price, etc. So that's how you could loop through a dictionary, how you can loop through a list and perform a basic or loop. Okay, so pause the video now. See if you can get each one of those cases working for the for loop. And if you can get it working, and if you're comfortable, let's move on to the next thing, which are while loops. So while loops are very similar to for loops. The difference is that for loops are always restricted to a certain number. It's either you are saying end at this certain loop, or it loops through a certain amount of items in an array or dictionary. But with a while loop, we provide a condition for it to meet before it stops executing the code. So sometimes it can run 5, 10, 100 times. Sometimes it only has to run one time. So let's see what we can do here. Say we want to print this to the screen. We are studying for an hour. OK, cool. So if we run this, we know what's going to happen. We are studying for an hour. But what if we want to keep studying? And we want to keep studying, let's say, forever. So all we need to do is use a while loop. We say while, which is a keyword, and then we give it a condition. Okay. So in this case, we're going to use hours not equal to zero. Okay. Hours is just a variable I've made up. We will have to declare it first before it's used. So we can say hours equal to one because we want to study for one hour. But also note our condition here of not equal to zero. So it needs to equal something other than zero for this code to run. Note we have to indent this to be inside the while loop and let's run again. So now you can see it's going to keep looping and looping until our program crashes. Why? Because we have a condition here that will always be true. We have defined hours is equal to one. Okay. So this will keep looping. And note I said that, you know, with for loops, we specify when it's going to end or there's some sort of restriction there. With this, it can just go on forever unless we are clear. Okay. So what if we did this? Hours is equal to int, because we want to cast the result to an integer, and we want to cast the result of input, and we can say, how long do you want to study for? Or even better, to be clearer, how many hours do you want to study for? Let's clear this. Now what happens? If we hit run, how many hours do you want to study for? Let's say one and hit enter. And it says we are studying for an hour. OK, you know what looks cooler if we do ellipsis at the end? What happens if we do two? So it still does we are studying for an hour. That's fine. But if we hit zero, it terminates the process. Now, this is quite cool because what we've done is we've created a program that keeps executing until we tell it to stop. Now, pay attention because I've seen in exam papers something very similar to this come out in a question. In one of the final questions, or a couple of the final questions I've seen, it asks you to repeat the code until a user tells it to stop. So it's very important you understand what's going on here. Take a break, pause if you have to, try it out, and see if it works. OK, now let's take a little bit further. So we have hours int input. OK, how many hours do you want to study for? Now what we can do is we can combine the for loop. So we can actually do a loop within a loop for our in range. Remember how I said we can define a range here. If we start at zero and then do hours, okay, and we print like this, you can see it says four hours 
in range with a maximum of whatever the user has inputted. Okay, so now what's going to happen? Shift F10, how many hours do you want to study for? One, we are studying for an hour. Two, and uh, notice we are studying for an hour. We are studying for another hour. So it's repeated this twice. Okay, and it's asked us again, how many hours do you want to study for? If we hit zero, the process finished with exit code zero. Okay, so now we're actually getting somewhere. We're combining loops and we're creating a functional program. Now, there's one more thing I've seen in the paper. It asks you to do this repetition and then it tells you to stop. But then it also says you output a message in the end to say we stop. And all we need to do simply is to say we have completed studying for the day. So now how many hours do you want to study for? One, maybe five. I don't know. So we got it printed. One, two, three, four, five. How many hours do you want to study for? Zero. Enter. And we have completed studying for the day. And that is how you can use while loops and for loops. I hope you learned something. Try it out for yourself.